Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, and I'm wondering if you're going to be coming to Cisco Live US in Las Vegas this year, 2017. It's going to be held June 25th through the 29th. If you are attending, and you're going to be attending sessions, I would love to invite you to come check out my session. It's BRK CCIE 3500. Now, don't let the name throw you. Just because it's got CCIE in the session ID, I think you could really benefit from this if you're using Cisco Unified Communications Manager Server at all. Whether you're a CCNA in collaboration, an NP in collaboration, maybe you're going for your IE in collaboration, or if you're just working with a Cisco Unified Communications Manager server, this would be a great session for you. It's got a bit of a lengthy title, Number of Globalization and Localization for CCIE Collaboration Candidates. And in this video, I want to break down what it's all about to see if this might be a session for you. Here's the agenda of that session. We'll do a brief introduction and we'll make sure that everybody's on the same page when it comes to call flow terminology. And we'll discuss the need for digit manipulation. That's one of the big focuses here. We want to manipulate the caller ID the number that was dialed. We'll take a look at different options for doing that. We'll take a look at options for setting up a route plan. There's the traditional approach and the approach that I'm going to recommend for your CCA lab as well as your production networks in most cases. And we'll even go through a couple of sample lab tasks that I've cooked up. So if you are going to be going for the CCA in collaboration, these are tasks that I made up that are indicative of what you might see on the real lab. I think you'll really enjoy that. And then we will wrap things up with the conclusion. But one of the big focuses is understanding why we need to manipulate Annie and Dennis. Now, Annie, that's caller ID information. And Dennis, that's the number that gets dialed. Let's say, for example, in this topology that I've got an entry in my LDAP server for my phone number. It's plus one eight five nine five 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 one two two two. That's in an E.164 format, meaning that we begin with a plus, that's followed by the country code, and that's followed by the number within the country. But when I dial out here from site A, this is going to be a local number. I'm in area code 859. My local office code is 555. So this is a local call. I don't want to have to dial this big, long number with the plus and the one and the 859 and all that. Well, I don't have to we can, on a site-by-site -site basis, do different digit manipulations. So the DNS is just going to be seven digits here, 555-1222, and off we go to the PSTN. But over at Site B, it's a long-distance call if I want to make this call. So I will be sending a different DNS, 1-859-555-1222. The point is, if we start with a fully globalized E.164 number, then we can just chop off information that we don't need on a site-by-site -site basis. That makes it a lot easier than saying, all right, at this site, do I need to add an area code? Do I need to add a one? Do I need to, to add a plus? No, we can just start with everything. Start with the fully globalized E.164 number and just on a site-by-site -site basis have that gateway chop off anything that we don't need. We'll also take some time and review a traditional route plan in Cisco Unified Communications Manager. If you've ever attended one of my courses on this, you know that I use the acronym of DGLP. That's device for the D. The G is a route group, the L is route list, and the P is route pattern. We create a device like a gateway or a trunk, and we put that device or a collection of devices into a route group. Then we put one or more route groups into a route list, and we point to a route list with a route pattern, and that might make us have a configuration well, much like this. Let's say that I've got a couple of ways to get from the network on the left to the network on the right. I'm calling from 2020 to 3030. I could go over the PSTN, or I could go over the IP WAN. I prefer to go over the IP WAN, a free long distance for one thing. Let's use the WAN if it's available. Now, how do I set this up? Well, I've got a couple of devices. One device is a gateway that gets me out to the PSTN, and I've got another device. This is a trunk that gets me out to the IP WAN, and I can put those different devices in their own right group. I can have a right group just for the PSTN and a right group just for the IP WAN. Then I can create a route list that includes both of the groups. I prefer to go over the WAN, so I list it first. Then I create a route pattern to say, if I want to get to a four-digit number beginning with a three, 
3XXX in other words, then I'm going to go to this route list which is going to pick a route group, which is going to pick a device. That's the traditional way of setting up a route plan within Cisco Unified Communications Manager. But there's a bit of a challenge. When you have a more complex environment, it can get really tricky when it comes to digit manipulation. You can do digit manipulation of your Annie, your caller ID, and your DNS, the number you dialed. You can do that at the route pattern level. You can do that at the route list, route group details level. Or you can do that at the device level. And the big challenge is... If you do it at the route pattern level, that could get overwritten by something you do at one of the lower levels. As an example, let's say at the route pattern level, I do any digit manipulation and I do DNS digit manipulation. Then I also do some any digit manipulation at the route list, route group details level, and I do some DNS digit manipulation at the device level. Well, I'm doing lots of manipulation. What's actually used? What's happening? Well, we're going to see that the route list, route group details, any manipulation gets used, and the device, DNS, digit manipulation gets used. They're at a lower level. They overwrote any previous instructions. And personally, going through the CCI lab, I know that this can get really complex. I cannot tell you how much time I've spent trying to figure out, why does my dial string look like this? I know, I know, I know, I know. I configured it to strip this off or to add this, and it's not going out of the gateway like that. What in the world is going on? It can get really complex. So in this session, I'm going to give you a much, much better way, a much more efficient way. And that new way is going to involve using a translation pattern primarily instead of a route pattern. And we'll use some really cool digit manipulation techniques such as a calling party and a called party transformation calling search space. And we also want to focus on how we configure a route group. There's a concept called a local route group that we'll focus on. We'll see that the traditional approach of having a separate route group for each of our sites. Here we've got HQ and we've got BR1 in this example that we'll go through in detail in that session, obviously. In this example, if I want to call 911 from HQ, well, I've got a pattern just for HQ that points to a route list that's just for HQ that then points to the HQ gateway and off the call goes. I've got another route pattern just for BR1 that points to a route list just for BR1. You get the idea. It doesn't scale very well. What we can do instead of using this traditional approach is to use a local route group approach. With a local route group, we can have, I think of it as a variable that represents the route group that we should use at each site. So phones at the HQ site, they're going to say, my local route group is the HQ route group. Phones at the BR1 site, they're going to say, my local route group is the BR1 route group. But we can share a common route list. We can have this route list called, as an example, SLRG for standard local route group. And it contains this variable called standard local route group. And phones at the HQ site, that variable is assigned a value of HQ route group. Phones at the BR1 site, that variable is assigned a value of BR1 route group. So if I'm dialing 911, then I can use that same route pattern in a centralized design like this for both sites or additional sites as well. And that route pattern is going to say, ding, 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 we've got a match. Let's point to the standard local route group. And then that standard local route group looks at the variable and it says, I wonder what their local route group is. Oh, this is an HQ phone. It has the HQ route group. So we take a look inside the HQ route group. We see that, oh, the gateway we're using is the HQ gateway. And the emergency call goes out the appropriate gateway. And we are going to take a look at a couple of CCIA collaboration lab sample tasks. This is the topology that we'll be using. And we're going to be taking a look at a couple of uh, what I would estimate are four-point tasks that are typical of what you might see on the real lab. If we can help you get eight points on your CCA lab, that's one-tenth of the way to passing. If we can do that in 90 minutes, that's 90 minutes well spent. But we'll go through in detail in the session, we'll go through these tasks where we're setting up some dial plans and doing some pretty serious digit manipulation as well. And we're going to set things up such that when a call comes in from the PSTN, we can globalize it as it's coming in. In other words, we've got the full E.164 number where we begin with the plus sign and then we've got the country code and the number within the country. But we probably don't want it to always appear that way on our phone's display. If I'm receiving a call from my wife on her cell phone, for example, it's, it's a local call. I don't want to see all these digits. Maybe I just want to see seven digits, if that's what it takes to call in my area. 
I can see just 222-2020. We strip off all that unnecessary stuff that I don't need to see because this is a local call. I want to be able to intuitively glance at my display and know that, hey, here comes a local call. However, there's a benefit, and we'll talk about the benefit in the session, of having the fully globalized, in other words, the E.164 formatted number in our call history. So instead of just having the seven digits, we instead would prefer to have the globalized, the E.164 number in our call history, like the missed calls directory as an example, where we do begin with the plus and the one, and which is the country code for North America and the number within the country. That's what we're going to see how to do in this session. So again, what are we going to be learning? In this session, we're going to review some of the basic terminology, Annie, Dinas, ISD and TON. We're going to talk about the traditional way of setting up a route plan, the traditional way of using route groups. We'll talk about the traditional way of doing digit manipulation, but then we're going to give you a radically new and better way of doing those things, where we're doing digit manipulation primarily at the translation pattern level, where we're using things such as called and calling, transformation calling search spaces, where we're using local route groups, where we strip off unnecessary digits before they appear on a phone's display, but maintaining those digits in the phone's call history. And we're going to put the task of doing the final digit manipulation on the gateway. So that way it doesn't matter if I'm in the United States or Spain or Japan. I can start with the fully globalized number that I'm calling and the gateway in Japan or in Spain or in the U.S. It's going to know this is what's appropriate for DNS going out of this gateway. Is it local? Is it long distance? Is it international? The gateway will make that decision and it will manipulate digits appropriately. This can save you an amazing amount of time on the CCA lab as well as your day-to-day -day management of a Cisco Unified Communications Manager server. So I really want to encourage you to add this session to your schedule if you are going to be attending Cisco Live this year. I cannot wait to meet you in person in Las Vegas and we'll chat about these things in much, much more detail. Hope to see you then.